Lisa, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm not too bad. Um, firstly, Lisa, I must congratulate you on the uh, fantastic Bloodlands. Uh, I was hooked all uh, for oh, all four episodes and I wanted to find out more. Um, I had my suspicions about your character, I'm not going to lie, from the offset. Um, so what was it like being part of Bloodlands? It was an amazing experience. I absolutely adored it. It's hard to believe that that was shot a year ago now. We had just wrapped before the lockdown, just before the first lockdown. Um, it was an amazing experience, I have to say. Um, Jimmy is a fantastic actor, a very generous actor to act opposite. And he really set the tone for the rest of the crew. Having Jed Mercurio on set every day was just amazing to turn around and ask him questions. The same with Chris Brandon, the writer, you know, and they would, if you couldn't make a line work or something, they would be able to kind of work it out there and then with you. And I loved it. It was an amazing experience. And also the other thing I think that it really uh, showcased was um, how wonderful Ireland uh, actually looked on camera. Uh, I thought it looked I really know. Good. And the great thing for the viewers at home is that they didn't get to feel just how cold it was. And um, so... <laughs> well, I mean, Ireland I was going to even... say, it looked very, very cold. <laughs> <laughs> You have no idea. Um, but, it, you know, it is a stunning country, if only we had the weather. But um, I think the variety that's available, particularly in the north of Ireland, in such a short space of time to go from a lake to a mountain in a day. And people were joking in continuity about the snow scene, that all of a sudden the snow had disappeared in the Moran Mountains. But that's Ireland in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, you know, we have that wonderful rain and shine um, throughout <laughs> um, kind of schizophrenic weather. Yeah. And such a complicated character for you, I I'm guessing, to play because, you know, it starts off uh, as very, very friendly uh, towards uh, Jimmy Nesbitt's daughter. And then obviously, as the series progresses, you're asking more and more questions about that character. I literally I was sat watching it with my uncle and every week. Uh, I'd be chucking new theories. I'd be like, no, he, she's Goliath. No, he's Goliath. No. And it was just like, it, it, it was really interesting. So was it interesting to play? It was. And like, we were very, as you know, cast members reading a script that was changing quite a lot. We were very confused as to what was going on. We would have a meeting. Hey, hang on a second. So I'm, yeah. and, and I, I think that kind of works actually for the complexity um, I found her a great character to play. I found this story set in Northern Ireland, you know, uh, in, the, in the wake of the Troubles, which is still very real. And um, I think particularly now when there's a threat to peace again, mm -hmm. or people not really respecting how hard one peace was, um, and, the, and the trauma that resides in every single person who grew up during those times, um, and that's a, that's a very real thing, you know, and um, the choices, individual choices that people had to make to preserve the peace or fight for justice. Mm. And um, and I think that that was handled very well um, in the hands of Chris Brandon and all the actors, you know, who recognized that this might be quite fresh in terms of the history of a place to build a drama around. Mm. So we didn't want to be frivolous with it either, you know, and be respectful. Yes, definitely. And uh, obviously it worked and it was a massive success because Bloodlands is coming back for a series too, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask you whether you're going to be in it, but it, the odds were in <laughs> favour at the end of the last series. Who No, that's true. That's true. It'll be, it'll be a shame not to be in Strangford Lock in February yeah. again. <laughs> in, in the cold temperatures. Um, but of course, uh, yeah. Lisa, today we are chatting about um, Pale Sister, um, which is a wonderful play. Um, so tell us a little bit more about Pale Sister. Well, I have had a long fascination with the role of Antigone, hmm. um, um, which is a Greek theatre play written by... Sophocles and um, you know one woman stands against the patriarchy and um, when you're a young teenager in love with lights and language there really are only two classical roles in the canon to choose from Antigone and Joan of Arc I mean they both don't end very well but at least Antigone has um, kind of a lot more meat on her for a teenager to play um, and I struggled trying to make that play work. And all the various versions that came, 
people, particularly men, seem to be obsessed with her and wanting to rewrite her. You know, this this image of this woman who stands against the patriarchy. Often she is portrayed as shrill, mad, adolescent, her failure to be the sea, the, the, the grey nuanced area of male decision making. Um, and so I, I it wasn't really um, until I had kind of completed a big, long labour of love with Samuel Beckett that I went back to revisit the Greek. Greeks and realize that an awful lot of the problems I face as a female, but as a female actress are the narratives that they don't quite work. Mm. And um, they're often male narratives. And um, when I read Jean Anouy's version of Antigone, you know, she's the shrill adolescent, Bertolt Brecht turns her into a fascist, Seamus Heaney, who I love, manages to sentimentalize her, Tom Poland turns her into an Irish revolutionary, um, Connor Cruz O'Brien calls her an agent of non-violent violence. Why are, why are men so obsessed with undermining this, um, this, this creature from antiquity? Antiquity. And yeah. then I really realized that these women from antiquity are very much still erect in our minds today. If you think about it, you know, Medea, the immigrant mother. I mean, the Daily Mail have an article about the problematic immigrant mother almost every day. Mm -hmm. um, Medusa, the intelligent woman. Um, what do we do with her? Will we cut off her head? The Trump campaign um, during the uh, 2016 election repeatedly used images of Medusa with Hillary Clinton's face superimposed on it. So I really realized that these stories that were written 2000 years ago are still extremely important mm. in, an, in the Republic of our imagination. Those archetypes of the troublesome woman are still very much alive and erect in our minds today. So I felt I had a duty to try and write a version of Antigone or work with a writer. And I worked with Colm Tibbin, um, to put some flesh on her mm. for, you know, my nieces for my daughter to read and recognize that there are role models where a woman can confront the patriarchy, can challenge truth and justice and not be mad or shrill or insane or wrong or threaten civilization, mm -hmm. that this is a totally viable argument. Yeah. And that's, that's really what I wanted to do. I didn't want to demonize him because let's face it, um, there are a lot of tyrannical men lying about at the moment. We could really make a, a kind of a, a, a continuous role model of those, Trump, Putin, <laughs> um, the list goes on at the moment, particularly with populist um, governments. And, um, and, and when Colm Tobin came to me, he said, I'd like to write you a one woman play. And I said, I need an Antigone. So we took the project into Columbia University and we worked on it really hard for a year. And he has the patience of a saint. You know, he would write a version. I'd say, no, nope, I'm not saying the word shrill. Yeah. Um, my well, I suppose you have to get it right. I mean, yeah, before you can actually do that as a one, you know, a one woman play, um, there, there's no other cast members to, to kind of fall back on. And I'm guessing it's very, very important for you to, to get it right. Yeah, but you can imagine how difficult it is to challenge unconscious bias. Yeah. Because <laughs> people are unconscious of it, so they're not aware that they are constantly portraying the woman as mad mm. or using language like shrill. Um, you know, we, we have to make people aware, and often that can be quite defensive or a difficult conversation to have. Mm. And I have to say, to that end, Colin was amazing. Um, and he really listened. And I certainly didn't win, because the truth is... If I had won, if I had made my point on every single version that I wanted to make and the play was totally fashioned how I wanted it, it would have been a polemic. And mm. that's not theatre. It needed to be drama. And so Colin would say things to me, you know, Lisa, politics is no good to me now. I need an image. I need to work as an artist, as a writer, and I need an image. And, um, and that's what we did. Yeah. Um, I, you know, Lisa, I suppose the, the one question that I have on my mind is when when somebody watches um, th this this performance, what is one thing that you'd like them to take away from it? Honestly, I think it's the multiplicity of voices that reside in all of us. Mm. Antigone really is every single one of those characters. 
Ismene, who's the protagonist, is Antigone. Antigone is Ismene. Standing up to injustice takes a, an enormous amount of courage. Courage isn't something you just acquire or are born with. You know, it's, it's, it's often, you know, a sign of enormous strength when you show your extreme vulnerability, mm. when you stand up, even when you're quaking in your boots, when you have no choice but to speak up and say something or def defy something that you feel is morally and ethically wrong. Yeah. And um, I think it's really important to give um, the next generation, particularly of women, role models who do this without being um, cast off as being crazy or threats to society to give them more possibilities and role models and ways of being. I think that's really vital now. Definitely. And, uh, and just finally, uh, Lisa, how, how can we catch uh, the, the Pale Sister? How, how can we watch it? So it's first broadcast on Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Um, it's only an hour or an hour and 16 minutes. And then from then on, it'll be available on iPlayer for about a year. Amazing. Uh, well, Lisa, thank you so much for having a chat with me. Um, as thank I say, you. I loved you in Bloodlands and I cannot wait to watch uh, The Pale Sister. But have so a lovely talking day. to you, Sam. Thank you so much.